It has been 930 days since the Great Catastrophe, where we know what occurred. The SEC vs. Ripple lawsuit. Right, it has been nine, almost almost 8,000 days, guys. Ex um, 930 days since the XRP community waits for the resolution of the SEC vs. Ripple court case. Right, this is just ridiculous. It's getting ridiculous at this point, guys, right? Well, we didn't know the court system does take time, guys, but we may have gotten our answer from Johnny Deaton and not to mention David Schwartz comes into play, which they just tweeted this out. Look, it's it's it's, it's getting it looks really good, guys, right? It's looking really good from Johnny Deaton. So many people claiming something is strange because the Ripple decision is allegedly taking unusually long. Here are some facts to consider before putting your tinfoil hat on jumping to conclusions. Okay, so let's let us explain and see what this what this is all about, guys. The Ripple and SEC reply briefs were filed in December. Thus, Judge Torres' decision is now at seven months. Okay, pay very close attention. Ripple isn't the only one waiting, guys, because, however, in the Thor Equities case, also before Judge Torres, the reply briefs were also filed in December. Judge Torres hasn't yet ruled. Wait a minute, that's interesting. So, mmm, interesting. So, it means there are other cases out there in the same boat as the Ripple versus SEC case, right? So, they're not biased, guys. This is a good thing. In the New York District Carpenters Fund case, Judge Torres' summary judgment ruling took over eight months from their reply briefs, right? Eight months, okay. Again, so far we are at seven months. Here are some different um, other cases' examples. Another one took seven months for the judge decision. Another case took six months for Judge Torres to rule. Right, and there are other several cases that he could name, guys. Right, so there are multiple, multiple, multiple cases that Judge Torres took her time, right, making up her mind, and it all happened between it seems as six to eight months or so, guys. Right, maybe nine. Now, in short, although I and others believe that we would see a ruling before now. There are other cases and examples that have taken an equal amount of time. Judge Torres is likely aware of the magnitude of her decision, right? So, guys, this is really good because I'm, I'm actually getting excited once again because it just means one thing, that this case will conclude soon from David Schwartz or at least we'll see her decision on summary judgments. I know waiting is annoying and we would all love to have a ruling on summary judgments motions as soon as possible, but I wouldn't think anything was wrong, unusual, or strange at least, or until at least the end of September. Wow. Right, so the time frame goes to end of September, right, about-ish, guys, which is again, so, so far seven months, September will be nine months, right? Hmm, interesting, nine months, huh? Once again, that, that, that month. I agree. On September 31st, Judge Torres would be placed on the six-month six-month naughty judge list for the first time, and her decision would be pending over nine months. I didn't review every case she has, but if you check this out, she has had, but I didn't find any that were longer than nine months. Although one was slightly longer than eight months, right? So again, guys, this is so good. I'm getting so excited because it means we're super close, guys. Maybe just like two months maximum from now, right? About-ish. It, it could honestly happen tomorrow as well. So, guys, the time frame is set in stone at this point in time. So it seems as, right? What are my thoughts about all of this, guys? As we told you guys from a long years now that all we're waiting for is summary judgment to finally occur and see what happens at that point in time. And the case, if the case is still concluded by then, then I believe it will have to, it's going, it's guaranteed to end, finish up during or right around the collapse, right? But let's take it step by step first and wait for summary judgment to first take place. Wow. This is really good, guys, right? People are talking about September um, uh, from different uh, birthdays and whatnot, guys. But if we check this out, we got something to tell you guys, right? We, perhaps we cracked the code, guys. I mean, we did crack it because it's going to happen soon, right? 
from from the proof in the pudding tweets we have seen from Johnny Deason and David Schwartz. But if we want to go into the Riddler's path, what do we see right here? Funny enough, the 900, 985th, uh, the, funny enough, the 985th day will be Thursday, September 7th, exactly one week before the Judge Taurus deadline. Now, it comes out to September 3rd, right? 985 days comes out to September 3rd. Check this out, guys. The reason why this is very important, so it seems as... Oh, and by the way, comment down below right now if you're still if you're still watching to this point in time in the video. The exact date on when you'll think we'll see summary judgment, right? You guys already know the time frame to buy, uh, till September, but comment down the exact date you think we'll see summary judgment on. Now, the reason why 589 and 9, uh, 985 is very important, right, with this case is because of this right here. Timing is everything from Baba Cooks, okay? Library case was filed on 329-2021. Library ruling came out on November 7th, 2022, which is 589 days later. You can't make this stuff up, right? Could that could this, could this have just been a coincidence? Possibly. But I don't know, guys. Maybe, maybe not, right? I don't know. I'm always looking at both sides of the story, right? Maybe it was just purely a coincidence. 589 days, right? The reason why that's so fascinating is because we got 589 completed. What's next? Maybe 985 days, right? Which will connect to the ripple case concluding, which will be September 3rd, 9-3, right? If we check this out, the reason why that's really fascinating is because as above, so below, right? It, it's the 589 mirrors 985, which connects to this sta uh, statement right here, as above, so below. It has to mirror, right? So maybe that really is what it, what it seems to be, right? I don't know, but... What we do know is we're going to be well every all I know is we, we are a day closer than yesterday, right? Tomorrow will be a day closer than today. We will get there, guys, right? Exactly. We have more time to buy XRP, not financial vice, right? There's nothing to complain about, even though I'm I was getting very irritated about this whole case, guys, because we know it's a damn show. And and who should we blame this whole shenanigans show on? Jay Clayton, your time has arrived. Justin, former SEC chairman, says spot Bitcoin ETFs should be approved. You can't make this stuff up. He literally went after Ripple, but now he's 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 supporting Bitcoin. So it seems as guys, check this out because we're about to expose Jay Clayton and how this is all and how this this is all going to make sense. Pay attention. Can they say no to a spot ETF? That's well, how much longer? Well, it goes to that issue. I think that when the SEC approved the futures-based ETF, they said, let's look at the futures market. We see the surveillance. We see, we see the protections in that market for the end investor that are sufficient. We don't see them in the spot market, so we're going to make that distinction. I think what the institutions are arguing is that those, those distinctions have gone away, and now the spot product is actually less drag, more efficient for the investor. So if there's not that delta in regulation, not that delta in, what I could say, efficacy, the spot should be approved. That's the, that's the argument that's going on right now. Look, the, the, the regulatory process, whether it doesn't matter. It's been a while already. It, it's been a while already. What, what I would say is this, if they're right, that you can demonstrate that the spot market has similar efficacy to the futures market, you know, it's, it would be hard to resist approving a Bitcoin ETF. Jay Clayton, your time has arrived. Why? It's because he needs to be blamed for this whole shenanigans case. Why? They went after Ripple. SEC charges Ripple and two executives with conducting $1.3 billion unregistered securities offering. When was this? December 22, 2020. December 22, pay very close attention because when did Jay Clayton leave the SEC? December 23, 2020. Right? A day. This is the. the, the, the <laughs> Guys, a day after he filed the case, he leaves. What, what are the chances of that? Right? I'm done. So Jay Clayton obviously got away, right? But at the same time, we can't be so mad at Jay Clayton is because he gave, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. We, we could, it could be both good and bad. Is because he gave everyone, the XRP community specifically, more time to buy XRP and keep accumulating as a king is, right? But it could be a, that could be a bad thing because now people are losing patience. Check this out, guys. It will connect to the case xrp holders listen up patience is the cor uh, cornerstone of successful investing yet it's a trait most investors lack in a world that craves instant results patient investors stand tall 
reaping the rewards of endurance and foresight. This is all happening for a reason, accept the risk and move along, guys, right now, financial advice, because XRP holders want to write letters to who? Check this out. Let me show you all how this was all systematically put in place. You all need to pay attention. I've been attempting to tell people that this is much bigger than Judge Torres for the longest time. Something is going on behind the scenes and the general public is not going to know. But these individuals sitting on these advisory boards and having these private meetings, they already know the outcome. Let me show you. XRP holders have run out of patience as the lawsuit against the SEC continues to stall. There is a reason for this. Now they're attempting to write letters to Judge Torres thinking that that's going to do anything. It's not. Let me prove my case. If you come up. I don't think we should be writing letters to Judge Torres, guys, right? For here. There's a company, okay? Scrolling up to the top of this, it's called Securitize. Now, just to show you all, this company, Securitize, is Securitize LLC, an SEC registered transfer agent. So they're registered with the SEC to implement tokenized reinsurance securities on its Securitize.io platform. Just thought I'd throw that in there, but let's go over here. What are they attempting to do? Our goal is to provide access for investors to invest in private market digital asset securities and security tokens. This is mind-blowing. Let me prove my case. Scrolling down here, who's on the advisory board? We see Brett Redfern, U.S. SEC former director of division trading and markets, also a J.P. Morgan representative, Paul Atkins, U.S. SEC former commissioner. That's going to play an important role. Pay attention. We see James Wallace, whom we know, coming over here to his LinkedIn, James Wallace, Ripple, four years, three months. You think that that's a coincidence? I think not. We also see investors in this company that's offering digital security tokens, Ripple. Hmm. But let me even further blow your mind. Let's pay, pay attention to Paul Atkins right here, the U.S. SEC former commissioner. Let's go back to something that he said in 2021. Paul Atkins, he said the incoming SEC chair, likely Gary Gensler, could withdraw the lawsuit against Ripple. He did not. And right here, Paul Atkins said, if not, the case may ultimately go before the U.S. Supreme Court. Pay attention to detail. What did John Deaton just say the other day? SEC versus Ripple attorney John Deaton says Ripple will appeal to the Supreme Court if it loses. They already know what's going to happen. Why do you think that Judge Annalisa Torres has not made up her mind? It is much bigger than her. These elite individuals, these systematically important people, that are sitting on these advisory boards, right? Collecting together the digital future and re-implementing our whole entire infrastructure. They already know what's about to happen, okay? Do you all see how this is all pre-planned? Ripple's right there. This is an SEC registered company. They're telling, Paul Atkins literally told you all two years ago this was gonna happen. And now we're seeing it coming to fruition. And what is this doing? It's messing with the emotions of all the retail traders that have no patience, that lack emotional stability. Buckle up. Anybody that told you that this wasn't gonna be a bumpy ride, they lied to you. What did we say years ago? And it's funny because Val Jester stated this so, I still remember guys, he stated that the case concludes when the collapse occurs. And we stated on this channel, we're waiting for summary judgment to first take place. And if it's still not done by that point, it's guaranteed it's going to happen around the same time as the collapse by 2025. Not funny to advice in my humble opinion, right? If it goes to the Supreme Court, if it goes to the Supreme Court. Now, this is the craziest thing guys. So what are your thoughts about what's going to happen with this case? Comment down below because is it going to be a bumpy ride? Will the case end in a few years time, right? First things first, we'll, we'll have to see what happens with summary judgment, guys, right? That's the most important um, future events we'll have to wait out and watch out for. Then what we could talk about. Uh, the Supreme Court and whatnot. So let's pay attention, not finish your list, let's be prepared. What is that? So if you guys are amazing, it is. See ya.